Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I'm going to show you how I put together this beautiful mermaid tear tray using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So this is our first item. This is a mermaid Barbie doll from the toy department at Dollar Tree. And I thought we could transform her into a beautiful mermaid. She's kind of popped apart already because I was trying to see if she would sit up. And I'm just going to go ahead and take off her shirt. It looks like she has like a molded shell bra already, which is great. And then she has a little mermaid tail. Now, she has bright blue hair. I didn't know at this point what exactly I was going to do with that bright blue hair. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and tape that to get out of the way so we can start working on the mermaid. My first issue was to try to figure out how to make this mermaid sit. When you try to make her sit, as you can see, she just pops apart. But I really need her to be sitting for my tear tray, so we're gonna have to try to remold her in some way. I'm gonna use this Model Magic in the color white from the Dollar Tree. I love this stuff. It's like a Play-Doh, but clay. It dries hard and you can paint it. Um, if you can't find this, you could always use white clay or any kind of clay. I've also gotten clay from the Dollar Tree as well, the modeling clay. But this is really easy to work with, and I've worked with it in the past. And, and so whenever I see it, I try to grab it. It comes in several different colors. And I'm going to have to use it to try to kind of replace the missing back there if she's sitting down. But first, I need to attach it. So I'm just going to use some hot glue on that little part that sticks out of the tail and I am going to glue her into a sitting position and I'm just going to hold that until it dries for a couple minutes so that she stays sitting up. Then I'll go back with the clay and fill in the missing um, pieces back here. <laughs> But first I wanna make sure she definitely doesn't fall apart. So I do add some more hot glue and let that dry. So she is good and attached. Now once she's dry, I'm gonna take a little piece of that Model Magic Clay. Again, it's just like Play-Doh. I just make a ball and I kind of put the ball here on the back and start pressing that in to the little mermaid doll trying to flatten it out as I go so that it's not real obvious that it sticks out and kind of wrapping it around her waist all the way around. She doesn't need very much coverage here in the front, but I want to kind of use that as leverage to kind of hold the whole thing together and then kind of just with my thumbs, flatten it out on the back. And I'm going to show you every step of this because I want to be able to show you how to recreate this if you'd like for your own tear tray. So I am going to go ahead and once I get it on here, I'm going to go ahead and start drying that so that we can start painting our mermaid. Normally I would just let it sit, but I want to get uh, this part of the project moving. So just using a brush, I'm gonna go ahead and use chalk paint and paint our little mermaid white. I'm gonna go over everything. So I kind of have her arms in the position that I want them. They are flexible, but I'm gonna kind of kind of paint them like they're not and just kind of going all over with a brush. Uh, I love the fact that she already has like the little shell bra on. I was thinking I was gonna have to find a couple seashells, but that is just a little bit of a time saver. So just again, just painting all over. Her um, face, I was trying not to go a little too globby with the paint because I didn't want to take away her features, but just going all the way around and then painting her tail. The tail has like a great like textured mermaid. Um, it's got like the bumpy scaly tail and the fin at the bottom. And so that part is great. 
I've been planning this mermaid tear tray for a while and I'm so glad that I did it. I think it's so pretty. I can't wait to put it in my kitchen today. And the tail was bright blue, so even though I'm using chalk paint, I'm probably gonna need a couple coats of paint to make sure I get maximum coverage. I wanna use a lot of whites today on this tear tray. A lot of white seashells and sea stars and sand dollars and different things that look really beachy, but I want her to be white like that too. So it kind of all flows together. So just painting another coat of chalk paint all over until our little mermaid is white. Now, once I do get her painted, I will deal with her hair. Her hair was kind of confusing me what I was gonna do with it. But I wanna take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your support. We are on our way to 7,000 subscribers. It's so exciting. And this is what we're gonna sit our little mermaid on. It's one of those shell bras from the summer section at the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna use one. I thought about having her sit on a rock, but I didn't really have anything that would work like that, so I thought a giant seashell would work. Now it's got a couple holes in there from it being the little plastic bra, so to cover those up, I'm just gonna use masking tape, and then since I had to use masking tape, I really need to paint it, and I really want it to be the same color that I used on the mermaid as well, so I'm just gonna go all over with a brush and paint that. Normally when I paint these seashells like this, I distress them at all, but I really want her to be very white and pure. So here's the hair situation. She has pretty blue hair, but it was in a ponytail and it's like really kind of thin, not great at all. So I thought, let's just go ahead and remove the hair and so we can replace the hair. So we're just gonna, give her a haircut. I'm gonna go in and just try to cut as close to the scalp as I can because I don't want any of that hair to interfere with our fake mermaid hair. Now, what I'm gonna use to make the fake mermaid hair is the rest of that white model magic that we used to put her together. So I just took the rest of the piece, so I would have a fairly large piece, and kind of flattened it out like into a little pancake. Then I'm just gonna wrap it around her head, sticking it to her scalp there, and then wrapping it around the back. Then I'm just gonna kinda squeeze it so that the bulk of the hair is like behind her head, and then just start molding it. I wanna make sure that none of that blue hair shows through, so just kinda pressing it down as I go. Now, I only had one package of this white model magic, so I had to make this work, and I wanted her to have long, flowy, you know, mermaid hair, don't care. So I am just thinning it out by squeezing it. So I just start squeezing it all over, also pulling out like curls or tendrils of hair that if it would look like the mermaid was like sitting on this shell, like her hair would be blowing in the wind, and she has lots of body in her long, beautiful hair. And it was the perfect amount of that model magic. I think it looked really good. So just giving her a little style, trying to pull it flat and long as I can while I'm at it, and giving her those beach waves that our little mermaid needs to have. And then once you get it where you think you like it, you're ready to go ahead and assemble. Now she won't stand up by her own, she's just not heavy enough, which is why I wanna use that seashell, and it kinda of adds to the project as well. So I'm just gonna attach her to the seashell with a little bit of hot glue, and hold that on until it dries. And I found, working with this Model Magic in the past, that if I can get like the Model Magic at least partially dry, then I can go ahead and paint it. But you really need to let it sit for a day to harden up. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the hair to make sure that it matches the same color as the rest of the Little Mermaid. 
I love this girl. This turned out so much better than I could have ever expected. And that's why I wanted to take you through every step of building her so that you could try to recreate your own little mermaid. <laughs> So I am just giving her a paint touch up anywhere that needs it and her hair. And then I'm gonna let, I'm gonna walk away and let her sit overnight and let her harden up. And that is exactly what I did. This is how she looks at this point. Oh, I think she's so pretty. Now, a lot of the white pieces that we're gonna use on the tear tray today are like a white ceramic. So they're very glossy. So what we're gonna do, this is the next day. I'm gonna use some Mod Podge and I'm gonna use like a high gloss Mod Podge to try to make her really shiny and sealed. And so just gonna go all over with a brush and gloss away. You could probably also use like a clear spray paint gloss. I wasn't really sure. I've got the plastic, I've got the clay. It probably would work. But I live in Florida and spray paint never dries because of our humidity. And I was like, mm, no, we're gonna go ahead and Mod Podge this girl. So it's not as glossy as I would like after I get my first coat on. So I do give her a quick dry with my heat gun and I go in and I go in with a second coat of that Mod Podge gloss as well to make her shiny. Normally I like the matte finish, but for this project, since I was using a lot of white glossy and you know, mermaids need to sparkle, I um, went ahead and made her glossy for sure. I just love how she turned out. She's so pretty. Just for this mermaid alone, why don't you go ahead and give me a thumbs up below. I would love for you to have, leave a comment after you're done watching today's video. I love reading all of your comments. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? So here she is, our little mermaid of our tear tray. I don't think anybody's gonna know that she used to be a cheap Barbie doll from the Dollar Tree. What do you think? I think she turned out so pretty. She is definitely the star of the tear tray. <laughs> now up next, I wanted a few punches of like bright blue and I found this little jar at the shore living section at Dollar Tree. It's the one with like the blue like fish scales but I thought also that would kind of look like mermaid scales. And I just want, most of it's gonna be white but I just want a few punches of that blue. So we're gonna fill it up with some of those white rocks from the Dollar Tree. And then I kind of wanted to make it look like a coral display. Now I got some of these little Christmas tree ornaments. Um, they're little Christmas trees, but I thought they looked like coral at Christmas this year at Dollar Tree. And so I bought a bunch of them so that I could use them for DIYs like this. If you turn them upside down, they look like a Christmas tree. If you just cut the little, not, they look like coral, not a Christmas tree. If you just cut the little trunk of the tree off, just using some heavy duty scissors. And I end up using just one package of two. They're sparkly, they're white, they're perfect. I don't need to paint them or anything. The only issue I have is they don't really have a stem on this side. So I, when I was putting them in there, I really couldn't get them to stay very well. So to fix that, I'm just going to use a little hot glue on the tip and kind of glue those into the rocks on the top of the jar. Now the jar has like a little white ribbon wrapped around it with a little white fish and that's fine. I thought about replacing it with a little mermaid, but I like the little white fish contrast on there as well. So just hot gluing in this wing, kind of going in the other direction. So it kind of fans out and looks like coral. Now, if you don't have these great ornaments, there's many things you can use for coral and you can kind of get that same look. And there we go, we have our little mermaid coral display for a pop of blue on our tear tray. Now to finish off the top of our tear tray, um, I also got one of these little candle holders from the Shore Living line. It's like a white rope votive candle holder and it's perfect. I don't have to do anything to it. Just pop in a battery operated votive candle or I guess tea light candle from the Dollar Tree and that is ready to go. Easy peasy. 
Now for the bottom tier, I thought I needed another punch of blue and I also got this bottle at the Shore Living Line. It's that beautiful teal blue. It's got a little white starfish hanging from some twine. Couldn't be more perfect. Don't need to do anything to it. Then I also got one of these little white mermaid tails. They have these in white, pink, and blue. So if you can't find white, you could always paint it. And then one of these white starfish from the Shore Living Line as well. Also white, glossy, perfect, don't need to do anything to it. The mermaid tails are not necessarily um, shore living. I think they have those kind of most of the time. Now our next DIY is gonna be a little mermaid sign for the bottom of our tear tray. I'm gonna use one of these little burlap block signs. I love these. They're like real heavy duty little signs that are covered in burlap and then they have this little sign on the front. And I thought we could remake this and make this a cute little mermaid sign for our tear tray using one of those glass stickers from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. But first we need to make that sign white, kind of give us a background. Now you could always paint it, but I love, love like that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree, especially like in this white board print. I think it looks really beachy. So I'm just gonna kind of sit that on the sign to kind of measure how big I need to make it. And then just cut along the edge of it to cut out a perfect little square. Now, I really love this because it covers so well. It's not see-through, so you can't see like the writing and the stuff behind it. And it's gonna give me a great background to work for for this sign. But first, I wanna give it a little bit more of the coastal flair that we got going on here. So. First, I'm gonna go over it with like some ivory to soften it up, brighten it up a little bit. And then I also um, wanna give it kind of a shiny look since I'm doing like a shiny look for almost everything on there. So I'm gonna go over with just some gloss Mod Podge too. This is gonna kind of make it match in with a glass sticker as well because those can kind of come out a little bit glossy too. So I just went ahead and painted it and sealed it while it's still stuck to the adhesive paper. And now all I have to do is peel and stick. So the hardest part of this is just finding your corner <laughs> and otherwise could not be simpler. So we're gonna put that on there and we have a perfect background now to work for our little mermaid sticker. I love this sticker. I found a couple of these and I've already used one for another DIY. I think it's so pretty and perfect for this tear tray. So I'm just gonna peel the sticker off and stick it down. Couldn't be any easier than that. I think that's perfect. It doesn't need another step. So since the mermaid, you know, took some time, everything else is gonna be easy. So that's the good news. Now, these are some succulents that I just picked up at Dollar Tree. They kind of reminded me of sea, um, seagrass, so I thought they'd be a perfect touch. I grabbed two of them, and all I have to do is figure out how to pull off these little alligator clips, and those are ready to go for filler. Now, these are little shell Easter eggs that I just picked up at Easter, and I thought, hmm, these are seashells. I might be able to do something with these in the future. So I was really hoping they were hinged when I like opened them up because I have a plan to put a pearl in there. Unfortunately there, it's not. <laughs> it's two separate pieces, but that's okay because we can attach these together to make a little shell, but it's not gonna stand up. It's just not heavy enough. So I'm gonna use some of these wood rings. These are a newer item with Crafter Square. I really like them. And I'm just gonna use one of those to build like a base so that our little shell is gonna stand up on its own. So I'm just gonna attach the little wood ring to the little Easter egg with um, some hot glue. Now, if you don't have these great little Easter eggs, you could also use like the little shell bra that we used for the mermaid and do the same thing on a larger scale. That'd be really pretty and I almost did that. But I remembered I had these cute little shell eggs and I've been dying for a chance to try to use them for something. Now I wanna glue it so the bivalve like looks like it's open like that. So there, there's enough room to do that. I'm thinking I can just attach it with some hot glue. Now these are like a white, like pearlescent, like shiny. 
um, finish, so I don't need to paint it or anything. It's exactly what I would want if I were to give it a finish. So I'm just gonna hold that on there and let the hot glue dry. And then as you can see there, I got a package of those faux pearls from the crafting section at the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could go ahead and put a pearl in our little shell. I thought that'd be a cute little display for a mermaid tear tray. So these are kind of big. Um, and this worked out just perfect. So easy and so cute. So to make sure that I don't lose my little pearl, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it with just a dot of hot glue so it doesn't roll around or get messed with by my family. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. This little project is ready to go. I told you easy, right? Now this is one of the little jute rope balls also from the Shore Living line at the Dollar Tree. And I thought this would be great just kind of on the back of my tear tray just to kind of fill up this space. I'm also going to use some of these Shore Living sand dollars and starfish from the Dollar Tree and just some white seashells from the Dollar Tree and from the beach. Now I wanted to finish off my tear tray with like a little pennant um, garland to go around one of the tiers. And so I'm going to use some of this brown and white twine that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I think this is so pretty, but you can use whatever twine you have. And then some of these little uh, wood mermaid clothespins. These are from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree and they're so cute. I thought instead of going to all the trouble of trying to get them off the clothespins, I would just go ahead and just use them as clothespins because a lot of times the little things break when you try to take them off of the clothespins and this just serves a dual purpose. So I put one like in the middle and then I'm just trying to space them out just with my eyes and I just kind of want enough of the mermaids to be visible from the front of the tear tray and I attach that with a little dot of hot glue and tie that up. And are you ready to build a tear tray? Let's do it. Thank you so much for watching. Check my description below for links to our Facebook group and find me on Instagram. So all the crashing sound of the breaking waves down here. Now I've been sitting here most of the day. Don't know why it's so hard to tell myself. I can almost hear the ocean talking to me Saying What are you waiting for? When life is a I